that to, to a much more serious story in, in many ways. New Mexico State men's basketball. What in the world is going on with New Mexico State? They have decided to cancel the rest of their men's basketball schedule because of a hazard, uh, excuse me, a hazing incident. Uh, three players allegedly hazed a teammate more than once. Uh, it More and more facts have come out. And so the chancellor of New Mexico State has canceled the remaining, I think there's six games left in the New Mexico men's basketball season. Yeah, um, I was kind of confused, you know, when you think about it at first about like, well, how, you know, why not just keep playing and, and suspend those guys? Well, maybe the fourth guy doesn't want to play right now, and the three guys are all going to be suspended. Well, you have 12 scholarships in basketball, right? So that's eight scholarships. 12 or 13, yeah, uh, yeah. That's eight or nine scholarship players if you're lucky, and then on the walk-ons, uh, not to mention just the bad look of like, oh, well, we, we got those guys out. And the fact that they had a shooting and a murder involved at New Mexico State earlier yeah, this year. That, so there are there are so many things going on with that program that, yeah, that I think they, they're they right in their decision to just shut it down and figure out what to do going forward because it's a mess uh, right there um, in, in Las Cruces. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a culture question going on right yeah. now. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty clear. But, um, I mean, yeah, they had the incident uh, with the altercation on campus um, with, uh, was it Brandon Travis? Um, but yeah, I mean, that was, um, the basketball player, Mike peak shooting, uh, Brandon Travis, who was a student. And I remember seeing that video actually, and there was a whole setup, like the guy who got shot was a part of, uh, another guy and a girl who lured yep. the basketball player to a spot on campus. And you can see it all unfold, you know, how morbid you're, you're, you know, it's not like super graphic, but it's like the loose closed caption or what close circuit cameras. Right. And you see, like, a girl enticing this guy, and then all of a sudden here comes two dudes running up to to rob him or whatever, and then he starts shooting, and they take off running, and one of them, I think you can, I think you can see one of them towards the tail end, the guy who ends up getting shot, like, fall to the ground. It's it's from a little bit of a far ways away. But I remember seeing that video in one of the first reports. So, I mean, that, that alone, you have a shooting on campus, and a guy dies, and your basketball player is the guy who shot him. Like, that's red flag. Even if he was defending himself, you know, that's not why you shut it down. But then you turn around and all of a sudden you got big hazing allegations and you're talking about like sexual assaults, you know, potentially and, and things of that nature. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's enough to start going, okay, what exactly is going on here? And I don't, I don't know the full story outside of just like the loose details of allegations and that shooting and, and whatnot, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a shame for those involved, but clearly something needs to be cleaned up there, right? I oh, mean, yeah. I don't think that any of us are, are questioning that part of it. So uh, just, you know, without a full detail, um, and that not being a huge school that's like, you know, it's not like they're in the Big 12 and, you know, they're playing Texas next week or something like that. I don't know what the support level is like. So being a smaller school, having a couple of major incidents going on, and, you know, here recently taking hazing very seriously – yeah, uh, maybe they do need to take a little bit of a timeout and kind of regroup, reorganize, and, and refocus on what this is all supposed to be about. We were trading text messages about this story because I asked the writer to come on, and then all of a sudden he's now writing for the Oklahoman, so he wasn't available. And the other writer now for New Mexico State from the Las Cruces uh, newspaper never did respond. I did contact the New Mexico State and asked if they could have somebody come on. And, of course, I have to do that. But they're not saying anything right now because it's an open investigation. The uh, the head coach in his first year and the coaching staff placed on paid administrative leave on Friday. Uh, the Aggies game at Cal Baptist had been canceled already and the season had been suspended. Now, the Western Athletic Conference, you have these six games, and now they're basically wiped out of the schedule. How does that affect seedings? It matters to the rest of those teams who are going to continue to play. New Mexico State, by the way, was 2-10 and 10 in conference play. But you have that three months after what, Craig, you mentioned with Mike Peake shot and killed the University of New Mexico student. Uh, when it was well, there's also the fact that they helped were covering it up in some ways. Like the when the police were coming to question them uh, about it, uh, they were very evasive in – you know, the information and, and uh, helping investigators initially from what I remember. And that, too, was like a what the hell is going – like there was a situation where like one of the coaches took the gun, I believe, that was involved. And there's a whole thing of 
It wasn't just like player gets, you know, uh, attempted burglary, shoots back and kills the guy. It wasn't there. It was like the aftermath of it as well, which is, as we know from the Baylor story, yes. like that's as much where you can get in trouble yeah. as anything. Yep. And so yet all of a sudden a member of staff's involved and the gun's involved and the police are involved and they're not helping the police. And so that, that too, I want to make sure yeah. was a part of this. Well, the coach, the head coach instructed his team to leave town after the shooting and, and return to campus, even though local police had asked to speak with three of the players who were with Peak during the shooting. Yeah. So here's a player who has already, in a matter of just a couple of days after the story popped, has decided he wants to enter the transfer portal. Uh, due to the unfortunate events that have occurred this season, I have decided it's best to enter the transfer portal. My family instilled values in me that haven't wavered. And at this time, I'm looking to find a place that aligns with them. Thanks to Aggie Nation, my coaches, teammates, managers for taking me in as family. I have dedicated my life to basketball and will continue to chase my dream. Uh, with my remaining eligibility, I look forward to my next step as a player. I wish the program and fans all the best. So that's a player that now is on the open market. I bet his phone has blown up even perhaps before that went out. So that's one of the things. New Mexico State has, you know, New Mexico, of course, has had a nice history in basketball. New Mexico State on and off, but a horrible story out of Las Cruces involving uh, the, the hazing incident, which is something that when I'm growing up, I never was involved. I never was anyone who hazed anybody else, but it was kind of just something that happened, fraternities, et cetera, like that. And now that's basically now just become verboten. You don't do it. You don't need to do it. And this one here, as you mentioned, Craig, was uh, the possibility of actual sexual assault based on some of the testimony by the victim yeah. who was the one that created the latest part of this story. Well, when I Created, played, reported, and that's how it became another part of the story. Yeah, when I played high school football, the um, the thing, the bad thing that happened was, and it wasn't like anything near, it wasn't like bad, bad, but when you were first on varsity, yep. they would wait for you to like – just be kind of be sitting alone in the room, like during the in between two days, and then everybody would come and like hit you with a flip flop. Everybody get kind of a good whack, and that that was it. You know, you'd kind of curl into a ball and wait for it to be over. Um, and it wasn't. I mean, that's not the greatest thing in the world, especially if you know you don't know what people's past trauma is either. That's why hazing is really bad because you don't know what triggers are going to have to people. But the like by my senior year, it was over because you know, the wrong couple kids get whacked or like show up and like you have an injury that's clearly not like a football one on your face and you're like, okay, what's going on here? I wish that would have been mine. Mine was the atomic bomb in the jock strap. Oh, gosh. Okay, it hurt, burned for a little bit. Other than that, that was one of the hazings of back in the day. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, we've all had it to some extent. Uh, we got our head shaved when we were freshmen in high school. Um, I think the girls went through like a dazed and confused type of thing, you know, put them in the parking lot, pour ketchup and crap on them. Like that's very out of touch now and would never pass. But in like, you know, that time period of late nineties, early two thousands, that was still acceptable, I guess, to whatever level as high school kids, we thought it was acceptable. And, and all of that um, wouldn't fly today. I don't think flew very much past that, but we all ended up okay out of it, and there was nobody hurt or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, it's it's definitely something that in that time since I've realized how sideways that could go and why it's not done and why just hazing in general is, you know, uh, not, the, not the smartest thing. But, I mean, this is a, this is, this is a very um, complicated story when you start getting into the details of, like, the actual involvement with police and the whole shooting situation. And, and then you add in the hazing stuff on top of it, a uh, potential sexual assault involved in that hazing uh, confinement. I mean, things like that, you start seeing words like that. And that's just, that's no bueno in any way, shape or form. So um, it sounds like, and especially with a first year head coach, all this is going on. I mean, good riddance. I'm sorry, but like you're not cooperating with investigators. You have a guy who's getting jumped, lured and shooting somebody. You got hazing going on. Uh, you're, you're trying to disrupt the investigation in like, just bye. See ya. I don't think there's really much explanation needed. And I don't think if, uh, even if they wanted to, there'd be much of a fight they could put up to try and, and reverse it. So, I mean, it sounds like, uh, the school's doing what it needs to do, but I'm sure there will be more that comes out. When we come back, uh, 